Good evening, everyone. It is five o'clock here. And we are going to make a beautiful gin drink. It is so beautiful that it was once called the bee's knees and the name stuck. Now, you might know the phrase bee's knees means, ah, oh, it's the best, it's wonderful, it's great. It's the knees of a bee, I don't know. Do bees have knees? Any entomologists watching and can let me know? I didn't look that up. So anyways, bee's knees cocktail. It's very simple. It has gin, it has honey, and it has lemon. It's a very bright, it's a wonderful summer cocktail. It's, you know, really any cocktail's good anytime, personally, I think. Maybe not eggnog in the throes of summer, but, you know, uh, you know, milk might be a bad choice at some times. But this was called the bee's knees because this was created to hide the flavor of bathtub gin. You know, the gin that you make in your bathtub. Doesn't everybody do that? No, we don't anymore because now it's not prohibition and we can have people like Tanqueray make us lovely gin and it be legal. Wonderful. So let's get started. So back in the prohibition times, everybody was making their own hooch, right? And hooch got this name bathtub gin. And uh, I guess it's because they were fermenting it in the tub and then distilling it and it just didn't taste great. So that's why you needed strong flavors like honey to sweeten it up and lemon, make it pop. And this cocktail was said to just wipe away any of those less than savory flavors of the bathtub gin. So it was then called the bee's knees because it was great. And I also think it's great, especially with real gin. It's even better. So. We're gonna start out with two ounces of gin, not from your bathtub, Jeff. Oh, anyway, so we're gonna use Tanqueray. And you need a dry gin for this, and a little quick gin lesson for y'all. So, so a London dry gin, uh, it's, it's the kind that's distilled with the botanical. So as you might have remembered from a previous episode, gin is, it's like a infused vodka tea with juniper and other kinds of botanicals. Now, it's, it's, it's really more fancy than that and it's more difficult than that, but that's what it is. It is a base clear spirit and they put little tea bags in it or they put little things to make sure that it's flavored with. I really hate this bottle. The thing I do, I need to make this more fancy. Don't you think? Maybe a little bit, maybe bedazzle it some? I don't know. I just wanna make sure you know I'm not using Rangpo, even though Rangpo's great. Uh, but yeah. But so what folks do with for London dry gin, in London, dry gin is not an appellation like champagne is. You know, you can only make champagne in the champagne region using the champagnois method, even though the method for champagne and cava is the exact same. They can only call it champagnois method in champagne. Anyways, so around the second or third distillation of the gin, they pop in the botanicals. So the botanicals are actually done with, with the gin. And it has very low sugar. I think it's what, like 0.01 grams per liter. It's very low sugar. So that's why it's dry, dry, sec, dry. It's dry. It's not sweet. And it has no artificial flavors and nothing is added after the distillation. Now that doesn't necessarily make it better than any gin that does have that. It's just a particular type. So I'm going to use a dry gin. So we've got two ounces in here, and then we're gonna follow up with one ounce of immunity building lemon juice. You know, really, you know, with all of this, the virus stuff, you know, you, it's, it's, it's really good to drink all of this vitamin C for your health. Anyhow, so then you get into other types of gin. There's distilled gin, which means you can put whatever you want in it. You can put food coloring in it. You can put, I don't know, you can put whatever. Crystal Light, you're not gonna put Crystal Light in gin, that's weird. But if Crystal Light came out with a gin, maybe they'd be, uh, I don't know, relevant again. And they could start another aerobics championship. Can you imagine? Another aerobics championship, 2020. It would, it would, it would blow Tiger King out of the water, I think. Just, just completely. I would watch that. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to YouTube 
right after you finish washing this with your drink and look up. I think it was 1988 Crystal Light Aerobics Championship. Aerobics. They are doing aerobics in a competition form and it is the 80s at its peak. Do it now, you won't regret it. I'm sorry, do it after this video. You won't regret it, I promise. Anyhow, the last and the bee-themed part of this cocktail is the honey syrup. I am using the little bit of uh, honey I had left from the Savannah Bee Company, which is a lovely store. I love it, they have everything. You can get propolis there, you can get this amazing chapstick there, not this one, but they have a chapstick that's amazing. All these different honeys. Uh, this one is for tea, but I'm putting it in alcohol. Same, same. And what you're gonna do is, cause honey is so viscous and honey is so sweet, you're going to do a one-to-one -one part, so a half and a half, uh, honey to water ratio and do a syrup just like you would uh, for a simple syrup. I was lazy and I only had a little bit of honey left in here, so I put the water in and I microwaved it and then I shook it up. Ding. So then we're gonna use a half an ounce of our honey syrup because we don't want it too viscous, we don't want it too sweet. We Pop that in and let's fill it with ice. Now, you know, there's all kinds of different gins out there. But, you know, the dry gins are the ones that you want for a martini or something that you want a real clean taste on. Now, for gin and tonics, you can do anything you want. You can do a, like a Hendrix, which is a rose and cucumber. You can do ones with bitter pink. I've seen pink ones. Uh, there are all kinds of crazy ones. So gin isn't just, oh, it's all a Christmas tree. I don't like it because it tastes like a Christmas tree. It can be anything you want. Well, it still does have to have juniper in it, otherwise it's not thin. We're shaking it, we're shaking it. All right, here we go. No, I didn't get it on the first try. Oh, there it is, perfect. And then we're gonna strain this into a coupe. And I've already garnished this sucker because I didn't wanna mess it up, but I have these adorable little bee picks and I did a little lemon on the side. We're gonna do, uh, garnish it with a lemon peel and then we're gonna pop it in a coupe. And it, it really is, it's just the loveliest cocktail. And I actually do like a little bit of, of uh, lemon, uh, little, little bits in mine. You can double strain it, but I, I don't double strain this particular one. And there it is. It's the bee's knees. Don't you know?